Um, now, I also thought in recent days, this is very interesting, there's been a conversation about how classical music and Beethoven in particular may be racist or classist. So I started to read as a trained musician myself, um, no Beethoven, um, what exactly this was about. So I want to read a little bit of this piece from The New Yorker. It says, black scholars confront white supremacy in classical music. And they talk about when America was formed and the interest in European classical music and says, the whiteness of classical music is above all an American problem. When European classical music was transplanted to the multicultural United States, it blended into the racial hierarchy that had governed the country from its founding. The white majority tended to adopt European music as a badge of its supremacy. Horace. This is really, really dismaying. The arguments that lack almost no logic or reason whatsoever. There was a time in America when pop music, when rock music was overwhelmingly dominated by whites and blacks weren't encouraged to participate. There was a time when uh, entertainment on the, uh, in movies and uh, on television was, was the same way. You know what changed? Had nothing to do with some concentrated effort to end, quote, white supremacy. Talented people, when they were given a shot, participated and it turned out that there were so many talented people, they dominated. In fact, you see this in sports, you see this in entertainment, and if black America or any other group is interested in classical music and they wish to participate and they are talented, they will be welcomed and they'll be celebrated. It's just sad that someone would want to make this argument in this way as an example of bigotry when it's just the logic and the data just don't show that. Well, and um, Jason Vox talked about this and they said that from the performance of Beethoven's Fifth, the big dun 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 dun, from that on, the way that concerts were attended was different. There was a different etiquette. You had to be on time. You had to dress a certain way. You could only clap at a certain times. And they said that's created a whole classism issue that, you know, it's time to cancel classic music altogether. Yeah, well, welcome to 2020, oh, where literally big. everything is racist and everything is problematic. I mean, when you go looking for a problem, you're certainly going to find one. And when you go in looking through everything through a social justice lens, it makes it that much easier. Look, if you want to make the argument that in certain circumstances, African Americans are being specifically kept from participating in this, then let's shine a giant spotlight on it and call it out. But this simply saying, oh, no, it's racist. It's racist because of the numbers of black Americans who are participating. Well, you should probably look at some of the other underlying causes rather than just looking at the data and without getting any context whatsoever, just jump to racism. But that is right now the world that we're living in. And unfortunately, like in this New Yorker piece, yeah. they spend 14,000 words making a really, really bad point. And by the well, way, saying that they do being talk on about time... The... <laughs> I was just going to say, Flatters. saying Flatters. being on time is somehow a white supremacy idea. I mean, this bigotry that undergirds the so-called move towards tolerance is really, really shocking. All right. We'll leave it there, gentlemen. Horace and Jason, thank you both. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you.